Hello, if you're watching this video, that means you are one of four people that have stuck with me through two weeks of Algebra 2 lessons. That's no small feat. You should be very proud of yourself. Now today, I call this video Hotard Episode 6, The Last Logarithm. That's right, today's lesson is our last day in logarithms. We'll be starting some new material next week. Now just a heads up, all right, before we start this lesson, I posted in Moodle, I posted a 6.6 .6 practice A worksheet. Before we get to the new content, I want you to take a moment, pause the video. I want you to try the first seven problems on that worksheet. It's just a review of what we've done the past two lessons. And then once, make sure you can do that, check your answers. And once you've done that, come back and we will start the new material. I hope you enjoyed that. Today we're going to be solving logarithmic equations. That's equations that have log in the problem. We're also going to be identifying what's called extraneous solutions. We'll talk about that, what that means in a minute. Now, before we get into solving the equations, very quickly, if you recall, the end of the third nine weeks, one of the last things we did was graphing these logs. Now, first of all, remember, if they don't put a base on the log, you remember what base is right there? It's base 10. All right, and I told you when you're graphing logs, you don't actually start with the log. You start with the inverse of that, just the exponential function, 10 to the x, and you make your table from that. Remember what our nice three easy numbers to plug in for x for, for the exponential functions? It was negative 1, 0, and 1. So 10 to the negative 1 is 1 tenth. 10 to the 0, anything to 0 power is 1. 10 to the 1 is 10. But you, we didn't graph this, though, because that's the exponential function. You remember what you did with that function in order to get the log, the inverse, we had to flip the table. So the log base 10 of x, the table would look like this. It'd be 1 tenth, negative 1, it'd be 1, 0, and 10, 1. So when we plot this, I'm just going to draw a quick sketch right here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, out there. All right, and then a couple tick marks. So we have 1 tenth, negative 1, almost on the y-axis. We had 1, 0 right here, and way out here, 10, 1. It looked like this when we connected our dots. Remember, it had an asymptote. You don't touch the asymptote. It never goes past that y-axis. Now, you might be thinking, why is this full graph? And I thought we were talking about equations. Well, I'll tell you. If you look at this, the domain, it doesn't go forever both ways. The furthest left it goes, it gets really close but never touches what number? Zero. So the domain is x greater than or equal to zero. It's limited. I cannot plug in any number. Actually, take that equal to the sign off. I'll lie to you. The domain, rather, is x greater than zero. All right, it never actually touches zero. Since I cannot plug in any number for x, the domain is limited. That means when we solve these log equations, we have to check for what's called extraneous solutions. E-X-T-R-A-N-E-O-U-S. Extraneous solutions. What that means is every once in a while, not that often, but every once in a while, when we're solving these problems, we work it out, we get an answer that doesn't actually work in the original problem. You have to go back and plug them in. Just make sure you're not getting a negative number or a zero inside your log when you work it out. So let's look at how do you actually solve these. I actually want to start with example two first, then we'll come back and do example one. So example two, this one I have log base three on both sides of the equal sign. All right, so if you look at this problem, what equation do you think I'm actually solving here? I'm solving 2x minus 3 equals x plus 4. Since I have logs on both sides of the equal sign, I can just basically ignore them, take them off. I'm going to be solving 2x minus 3 equals x plus 4. And I'm just going to get my x's together, just like every equation. Subtract x. It gives me x minus 3 equals 4. And then add the 3. It's going to give me x equals 7. So before I say, yay, I got my answer, and I go on, I just need to make sure that when I plug this answer in, that it actually works, that I'm not getting negative numbers or zero on either side of the equal sign. So if I plug in x in 7 for x, 2 times 7 is going to give me 14, minus 3 is going to give me 11. I'm okay over here. 7 plus 4, I'm getting 11. Got the same thing on both sides of the equal sign. I'm good. x equals 7 is the answer. If it doesn't work, then it's an extraneous solution. You would say no solution to that problem, but it does work, so we're good. X equals seven. 
Now let's go back and look at example one. This time, right, if you notice, it's not the same thing as example two. Example two, I had logs on both sides of the equal sign, so I could just take them off. I cannot do this here. Do not solve 3x minus 1 equals 2. I have log base 4. I need to get rid of this log. Now, just like with the exponential functions, we could take the log to undo the exponential function. Here, we've got a log function. We're going to take the exponent to undo that. I'm going to do everything with a 4 base on both sides. Basically, I'm going to do 4 to the this power equals 4 to this power. Again, the reason I do that is because the exponential function and the log function, they undo each other. They're inverses of each other. They cancel out. So that leaves me with 3x minus 1 equals, but it doesn't equal 2. It equals 4 to the 2 power, 4 to the second power. All right, so one more time, whatever the base is, I put that base on both sides, and I make what's written in the original problem just the exponent. So now I'm going to solve that. 4 squared is 16, 3x minus 1 equals 16, and solve that equation. Add the 1, got 3x equals 17, divide by 3, got x equals 17 thirds. And again, I just need to make sure when I'm plugging this in that I'm not getting a negative number or zero inside the log. So I'm just really checking this part of it. 3 times 17 thirds, the 3's cancel out, that just leave me 17, minus 1 will give me 16. Getting a positive answer right here, I'm okay. All right, so now at this point, I want you to pause the video, open that 6.6 .6 practice A page back up, and I want you right now just to try problems 8 through 13. Problems 8 through 13, try to answer those, check your answers on my key, all right, and then come back and we'll do the last two examples. Did you do it? I hope so. Okay, so now let's look at our last two examples. Example three and four. All right, example three, just a heads up. Example four is pretty quick. Example three is gonna take a little bit longer just to give you an idea of what's coming up. Now, example three, what's different about this problem? I have two logs on the same side of the equal sign. So I'm gonna have to use those properties of logs that we learned last week. I need to combine these into one log. Remember, if you have log of something plus log of something, if it's addition, you could turn it into what kind of problem? Multiplication. I can rewrite this as log base two of x times x plus two equals three. If that just blew your mind, go back and look at that lesson we did last week on expanding and condensing logarithms, condensing logarithms, how we had log of something plus log of something turn into log of something times something. All right, so now I can solve this just like I did the example one. I have log base two. I need to get rid of that. So I'm gonna put a base of two on both sides of the equal sign. I'm gonna make this two to the log base two of x times x plus two equals two to the third. And again, the reason I do that, the two and the log base two cancel. I'm left with just x times x plus 2 equals 2 to the third. Now, what is 2 to the third? Is it 6? No, it's 8. So I've got x times x plus 2 equals 8. And let's go ahead and distribute this x. It's going to give me x squared plus 2x equals 8. Now, if you recall, we did this a whole lot in the fall semester when we had x squared in our work. We had a few different methods for solving. All right, quadratic formula worked every time. All right, and then square root method worked if you just had x squared. But if you have an x squared and an x, what's the method that we did a whole lot? Starts with an F, rhymes with factoring. Factoring, all right? But whether you're using factoring or quadratic formula to solve this, I need to get it equal to what number? Zero. So I'm gonna subtract the eight. I'm gonna make this x squared plus two x minus 8 equal to 0. And I'm going to try to factor this. I need to find numbers that multiply to give me negative 8, multiply to give me negative 8, and add to give me positive 2. All right, so when I do that, that's going to be positive 4 and negative 2. 4 times negative 2 gives me negative 8. 4 plus negative 2 gives me positive 2. That doesn't mean my answers are positive 4 and negative 2, though. What does that mean for my two answers? x equals what? Negative 4 and positive 2.
x equals negative 4, x equals positive 2. Now, I got two answers. All right, it's possible that both of them work. It's possible that only one of them works. It's possible that none of them work, and this is no solution. I need to check each one individually. Remember, I cannot take log of a negative number or of zero. So if I plug in negative 4 into my original problem, I'd have log base 2 and negative 4 up. Oh, I can't do that. All right, so I automatically know this one is extraneous. That one's not going to work. Now, what about 2? If I plug in 2, log base 2, 2, that's okay. Well, that's, when I plug it in here, 2 plus 2 is going to give me positive 4. I'm okay here. X equals positive 2 works. So just not the negative 4. I get just X equals 2 for that answer. Okay, that one was a little tricky. All right, and then the last one, ln, remember, that's just log base E, natural log. So I'm going to do what I did in this problem. How I condense this, I combine these. But this one, I have a subtraction. All right, so I'm not going to make this natural log of x times 4. I'm going to make this natural log of what? x over 4. ln, natural log of x divided by 4, equals 2. All right, because it's subtraction, so I can turn it into a division problem. All right, now this time, remember, ln, natural log, that's log base what? e. So I need to do a base of e on both sides. So just a heads up, this one you're going to need your calculator to do. It's going to be a decimal number. The e and the log base e cancel out. I have x over 4 equals e squared, whatever that is. I'll type it in my calculator in a minute. But I need to solve for x. So what's my last step to get x by itself? Multiply by the 4, both sides. Multiply by 4 times 4. So I'm going to get x equals 4 times e squared. Whatever that is, it's going to be a decimal. Let's find out. Four second, remember that second LN button to get the E squared. And that's going to be about 29.56. All right, and that's the lesson. Now, one little thing I do want to point out. All right, when you're solving the rest of the problems on that practice A page, problems like example three, how we had X squared and all work, all right, that one we used factoring to solve. Remember, you could also use quadratic formula. If there's a problem that you just can't figure out how to factor, remember x equals negative b plus or minus squared to b squared minus 4xc all over 2a. In fact, I think there is one problem in the practice page where you have to use quadratic formula to solve it. All right, it will work on all of these x squared problems. You don't have to use it every time. But factoring worked for this one. It works for most of them. All right, and again, if you have any questions, Feel free to email me. I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Y'all have a great day. Be safe. And I'll see you around.